everyone. This is John Daly. I'm here again with Bernie Goldberg for another episode of the No BS Zone. How's it going today, Bernie? As I always say, John, so far so good. We'll see. All right. So today we're going to start off by talking about the uh, grand jury in Manhattan that is currently deciding whether to bring felony charges against Donald Trump over the alleged hush money he paid to uh, porn star Stormy Daniels during the uh, 2016 election cycle. Um, Trump has been saying this is all political and um, that he's about he's been warning everybody, um, all the supporters, that he's about to be indicted and arrested. Though as of the time uh, we're recording this anyway, um, that hasn't happened yet. Bernie, what are your thoughts on this story? Well, you don't have to be a fan of Donald Trump. And to those who don't know, I'm not a fan of Donald Trump. To agree with him in this case, it looks political. I mean, if you're going to indict a former president of the United States, the crime ought to be something serious, something not about how he accounted for hush money to a porn star. I mean, the argument is that maybe he was hiding a campaign contribution since he was running for president. Here's another argument. He didn't, he didn't want his wife to know about it. I could see a jury buying that argument that it wasn't, it wasn't that big a deal. The point is, if you're going to be the first district attorney to indict the first former president of the United States of America, it ought to be something significantly more important than paying off a porn star to keep her mouth shut. Because you better take into account, and I don't think Alvin Bragg has taken in, into account, the turmoil you're going to cause in our already highly dangerously polarized America. It's not worth it. I think it's a mistake. No, I, I agree with you. This is a, uh, that it's a selective prosecution for sure. Um, I do think Trump did it, you know, that, that he paid off Stormy Daniels and that it was probably illegal, but, you know, some of the legal experts I've been reading, you know, um, they say it's much more easy to prove as a misdemeanor than what they're going for. But, um, and, and I, like I said, I, like you said, I, if Trump were someone else, um, the DA would not be pursuing this in this fashion, um, especially all these years later. Um, politically, you know, some people are saying this is a gift for Trump. I'm not quite as convinced that's true. Um, you know, obviously it does appear to be political. Trump could use that, you know, to cloud the other active investigations into him over much more serious crimes by saying, you know, they're all political, but he's already been kind of doing that anyway, and he was going to keep doing it. So I'm not sure the, the dynamics will change all that much. Um, again, I could be wrong. Do, do you think it's going to hurt him politically, Bernie? I think, no, I don't think it's going to hurt him politically. And I or think it him. may, I think it may very well help him politically. Uh, it, it, he, he doesn't need his base getting any stronger than it is. It, nothing will affect the base. They're with him. But he may win over some Republicans who don't like him, who may say, you know, it was collusion with Russia, it was two impeachments, it was now it, it was a, a special prosecutor, now it's hush money to a porn star. The Democrats won't rest until they finally bring him down. I think he will portray himself with some success as a victim, you know, a victim of a witch hunt, as he likes to call it. I don't think it'll hurt him politically, but I think it could help him because even if the prosecutor makes his case that the money was listed on the official company books as a legal expense, but it really was money to cover up uh, an affair so that he wouldn't hurt himself with voters, even if the prosecutor convinces a jury of that. I think a lot of people in, in the American electorate are going to say, so what? So what is, and, and let, let's not forget that Alvin Bragg is not exactly tough on crime. At least in conservative circles, he's seen as a guy who's soft on crime, who doesn't believe certain crimes are really crimes, who believes the real victims in all of this are the criminals. And now he's going after Donald Trump, really? Right, and he and he actually passed on this on going against taking this on 
a while back and at some point you know I, I, i'm guessing the political pressure you know he got uh, he changed the story on that uh, another part of the story um kind of interesting is that trump has been on social media demanding that his supporters protest what's happening to him and telling them in all caps lock to take our nation back um, are you worried, Bernie, that we might see some violence in the streets over this? This is a mistake on Trump's part. But given that it's Donald Trump, it's not, a, it's not surprising. It's wrong, but it's not surprising. Uh, he calls for protests. That's legal and all that. But what if the protests get out of hand? A distinct possibility. Did Donald Trump learn nothing, absolutely nothing, from what happened on January 6th? No, I think that's a good point. And I, I think I, I think the answer is probably no. I mean, whenever he's been talking about January 6th lately, he still kind of uh, hails these people as patriots, you know, that participated in it. Um, he even cut a little album with them. Uh, it's, on, it's on Apple Music. We had talked about some of the prisoners that went to jail for, for, for their activities on January 6th. So, I don't know. I think he kind of likes this idea of having this very uh, loyal base that will do just about anything for him. Well, let me, let me end this segment where I began. You don't have to be a fan of Donald Trump, and I'm not, to think that this is a mistake on the district attorney's part. But let's not forget, John, it's a progressive district attorney in a provincial little place called Manhattan where Donald Trump won something like 16% of the vote to, to, to uh, Biden's 84% of the vote. But if, let me, let me say this, if this turns out to help catapult Donald Trump into the White House once again, Alvin Bragg is not gonna be popular with his fellow progressives in Manhattan. He may not get invited to fancy dinner parties anymore. They may not contribute to his political campaigns anymore. And that, in a place like Manhattan, is a real crime. Yeah, we might not even see anything. Well, I'm get, last I read next week, we'll, we'll have an answer on all these things. But uh, one, one more just before we leave and go on to the next thing. Um, a part of the story that I think is kind of funny, um, there's a number of people in Trump world, I think even including uh, Donald Trump Jr., who have been demanding that uh, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis get involved with this somehow. <laughs> um, he's, he's, of course, Trump's, Trump's uh, biggest speed bump, I would say, to the 2024 nomination. But, um, you know, they're saying that, you know, DeSantis is the governor. He should be fighting for his, his citizen in his state. <laughs> he should be fighting, you know, extradition. Um, in, in reality, aside from... Well, go ahead. I don't even think that's legal. Can you... It's not. Can it's you, not. <laughs> You can't fight extradition from one, for, you could fight extradition from Australia to the United States or from right. North Korea to, to the United, you can't do it from one state to another, can you? No, you can't. I did look into that and, and apparently this case doesn't even involve extradition. So that, that doesn't make any sense in the first place. But it's, it's, it's kind of funny how this is, DeSantis is sort of being dragged into this controversy somehow that, that has exactly nothing to do with him. And he's supposed to go, you know, bend over backwards to help out Trump, who in recent weeks has been suggesting that DeSantis is a pedophile, that he, he's been filing these ridiculous ethics claims to try and get him kicked out of the, the governor's office. But There's somehow no he's, There's no he's shame in the Trump family. Step up no Trump. Yeah, it, it doesn't it doesn't make any sense to me. Um, so another uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and move on to a different topic here, switching gears. Um, a lot of people, including you and I, have been having a lot of fun with the George Santos stuff. Um, you know, by the time Santos ran for office, he had made up a seemingly endless number of, of stories about his past. But another person who's done quite a bit of that, granted, not as much as Santos, but a lot is Joe Biden. Um, he's claimed to have been arrested alongside uh, Nelson Mandela in South Africa and arrested when marching with civil rights protesters in the 1960s and other things of that nature. And they're just not true. I mean, they're made up. And uh, just the other day, he was uh, being interviewed um, about, the interviewer asked him a question about when it was he became a supporter of gay marriage. And he produced this story from his childhood, supposedly, 
when he uh, said he saw, you know, quotes, two well-dressed men in suits kiss each other. And then supposedly his working class father turned to him and said, you know, keep in mind this would have been in the, in the 1950s, maybe even the 1940s, and said to him, Joey, it's simple. They love each other. And that was <laughs> that was supposedly Biden's turning point. Do you think there's any chance that the story actually happened, Bernie? No. <laughs> N O. No. No chance. Now look, this is something that's going to be difficult to prove or disprove. I grant you that. <laughs> but about 1960, it would have been earlier than that. Well, <laughs> two well-dressed men in Wilmington, Delaware, kissing on a on a street corner. I don't think so. It's possible, but I don't think so. And Joe Biden's blue collar father saying it's simple. I can't even <laughs> say this without with, with a straight face saying it's simple. They love each other. I don't believe a word of it, not a yeah. word of it. And, yeah. and somebody came, I, I'm not vouching for this because I didn't check this out, but somebody was on TV saying, you want proof that it isn't true? I'll give you proof. The building that one of them, one of the men supposedly walked into after kissing his boyfriend or whatever he was in public, that building was over four miles from the high school. I don't know if that's true, but that's what somebody, he said, I checked and the building is like five miles from the high school. So the guy kissed his boyfriend and walked right into the building five miles away. <laughs> Why does he do this? Now, you know, it's only a lie. You know this, John. It's only a lie if you know you're not telling the truth. I'm not sure it's a lie. I know it's not true. I'm pretty sure it's not true, but I don't know if it's a lie because I think I think Biden may actually believe this garbage. This is the no BS zone, so we can't let something like this slide by without comment. But he may believe it. I don't believe it. I don't think you believe it, but that's a, why don't you state categorically whether you believe it or not? No, I don't. And again, this this was even based on the timeline and how old Biden, it, this would have been, you know, and I don't remember if he said it was high school, but he, it was in his youth, it, you know. Yeah, high school. High school. Probably, oh, high school. Then it would have been the 1950s. It would have even been prior to the 1960s. But you know this 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 strikes me as uh, what I would call civil rights fan fiction, uh, which which Biden is very clearly into. A lot of you know these stories he tells about his past usually has to do with him standing up in some significant way, you know, ahead of his time for civil rights. And I just it, they're just not true. You know, you have people that were there at the times of these stories that are saying, you know, this didn't happen. There's no arrest records, you know, for these times he says he was arrested. Um, you know, and, and in reality, you know, when you look at Biden's legislative record, uh, he was opposed to gay marriage, you know, at least is exactly, is, exactly. Yeah, it's up, a up very, until the late 90s, it, it, probably longer than that. That's a very important point. The word he used in the interview was he had an epiphany, an epiphany about the two men who are in love. It's as simple as that. That was his epiphany, that it was as simple as that. Yet when he became a senator after high school, after college, when he became a, a United States senator, he said he was against same-sex marriage. A marriage, he said, is between a man and a woman. Now, I happen to be in favor of same-sex marriage. I, you know, I do believe if you love somebody else, let it happen. Who cares? It's not a big deal to me. I understand religious people would disagree. I understand that. But if you had an epiphany in high school, but when you were older, when you were in the United States Senate, you spoke the opposite of what your epiphany told you, then you're full of crap. Sorry to put it that bluntly, but Joe Biden is full of crap. I hate to say that about a president of the United States, but he's full of crap. And here's something else. He's making George Santos look good. I thought <laughs> that's something I didn't think I'd ever say but he's making George Santos look good. Great. Well, speaking of Biden, um, as of right now, he's still 
Um, looks like he's still going to be running for re-election. And since we talked last, um, the GOP presidential dynamics haven't changed a whole lot. Uh, the declared candidates so far are Donald Trump, Nikki Haley, and a guy whose name I'm, I'm totally going to butcher because I, I haven't watched a lot of televised news <laughs> lately, but Vivek Ramaswamy, I think. Yeah. But um, Vivek- others, of course, are expected to enter in the coming weeks. Um, in last week's off-the-cuff audio commentary, you described how Mike Pence recently criticized uh, Trump pretty strongly about January 6th. But for the most part, you know, 2024 hopefuls have been really pulling their punches and avoiding or really avoiding punching altogether when it comes to Trump. Um, do you see that changing at all as we move forward? Or do you think they're going to continue sort of tap dancing around the front runner right now, who's Donald Trump? It's a good question, John, and, and I'm, I'm just not sure. I, I do know that sooner or later you would, and by the way, Mike Pence took on Donald Trump by name, by name. Uh, others, Mike Pompeo and Nikki Haley have taken on Trump indirectly. You know, Mike Pompeo saying it's not time for an, somebody who's an egotist who thinks it's all about himself, or, words to that effect. Of course he was talking about Donald Trump. But he didn't say Donald Trump by name, not at CPAC anyway. And Nikki Haley talking about a mental test for candidates over 75. Well, Biden's over 75, but so is Donald Trump. But she didn't mention him by name. I don't know if somebody will. They're going to try to thread a needle because if you take on Trump directly by name, if you say Donald Trump is this or that and something negative, you will you will offend his loyal base, 20, 30 percent of of the popu- of the electorate, and you're going to need them if you beat Donald Trump to the nomination. So it's a it's a needle they have to thread. It's a tightrope they have to walk. If I could use two different cliches, um, and it's going to be a tough decision to make. If you don't take him on, you give him the power to take you on unchallenged. If you take him on indirectly, I think you look weak. You look like you're afraid to take him on by name directly. It's going to be interesting to see how it plays out. I, I, if, if somebody were advising me, I'd say, say you like his policies, say you think he did some good things, but you think it's time to move on because, and then it's time to move on from Donald Trump. Say it. Don't offend his loyal followers more than you have to, but take him on would be my advice, but whether it comes to pass, I just am not sure. Yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting watching what's, what's going on. It's, you know, there, there are some policy differences um, between some of the candidates running. I, I had written lately about Nikki Haley is much more hawkish you know, on Ukraine and, and foreign policy in general, but when asked to you know, distinguish herself, but with Trump, she won't. She won't actually. She'll just she'll present in separate, uh, you know, conversations what she how she sees foreign policy. And, and what kind of cracked me up was that um, the other day, and I wrote about this too. But DeSantis came out and started talking about Ukraine, and really was much more aligned with Trump all of a sudden, which was a sort of a stark contrast between how he used to look at the, you know, Russia and Ukraine um, issue. And right after he did that and sort of you know adopted Trump's position for the most part on it. Uh, Nikki Haley attacked Ron DeSantis for having that position. She still hasn't attacked Trump for having that position. So yeah, it's it's going to be sort of, I'm, I'm worried in some ways we're going to see what we saw in 2016, where some of these people that are lower on the totem pole in these debates are going to be going after each other and kind of give, you know, let Trump off the hook. Well, let me tell you how what you just described affected one voter, me. I would vote for Nikki Haley if she got the nomination. But she lost my support as a as a strong backer because of what you said, because of what you described. She she'll go after one candidate for having the same position as Trump, but won't go after Trump. Nikki Haley is a little too political for my taste. Now, again, if she gets the nomination and she's running against Joe Biden or any other Democrat, I'll vote for her. Okay. But you don't have to be a profile in courage, but don't be a profile in cowardice either, okay? Right. Maybe that's asking too much of a politician 
who desperately wants to be president, but that's that's how I see it. She's lost she's lost my support, but I will vote for her, as I say, if I have to. Great, great. Well, that's probably a good place to uh, to leave things today. Um, I was talking to you, to Bernie off air, everybody, about um, next week's Q and A uh, due to some scheduling issues. If you guys could have those questions turned in early, um, probably by Tuesday night at midnight, uh, that would be great. Um, otherwise, let us know also uh, in the comment section. Uh, you know how you like what we're talking about. If you have any ideas, go ahead and throw them our way um, for the next uh, the next No BS Zone. Bernie, is there anything else you'd like to add today? No, we got some new uh, subscribers recently. I, tell your friends. I mean, seriously, I'm asking each and every one of you listening to this to tell your friends and have them join the party. Sounds great. We Sounds really great. enjoy that. All right. Well, thanks a lot, Bernie. Yeah, you have a good day. All right. Yeah, you too, John. Thank you.